Step two, torque by sequence to 22 foot pounds. Pins the turbo motor and full time four wheel drive dual range. All right, we are now doing our water pump. What we want to do is disconnect our hose, our little elbow hose. We're replacing <laughs> this one with a new one. Peel it away from the water pump side and from the water pipe side and salvage the clamps. Then we want to unscrew all the bolts around the water pump. And now she's ready to come off. Just like that. Metal gasket's what it's originally equipped with. Sometimes a new water pump will come with a metal gasket. Sometimes it'll come with a paper gasket. I'm just fine with reusing the metal gasket, but if your thing comes with a new one, may as well use the new one. And here's the condition of our old water pump. It's not horrible. It spins freely, but what you want to make sure is that it's not loose and wobbling. If I torque this just right, I can feel a little bit of play. Um, a newer water pump should feel tighter but not gristly, but more fluid-like. If this spins too easily, that means it's on its way out. Here's our uh, replacement water pump. As you can see, it's much cleaner. This is actually a salvage one. It's in better shape than the one that came on here. This motor, that the block that we're using, has sat around for a while. This one was an active driver, so we're using our known good water pump with this engine. So now we're ready to install our new water pump. Now as you can see I have the water pump with the bolt still in it. I'm going to line up my gasket. Cool. Alright, so I have my bolts roughly where I want them. And I'm going to start threading these in by hand to get this thing where I Once want Once I have it. them in, I can snug them down. You want to go in kind of a radial pattern. Much like doing your uh, lug nuts on a tire. Now that we're here, we're going to want to torque them to specifications and to the pattern stated in the factory service manual. All right, now we're ready to tighten down our water pump. We want to tighten it down to roughly nine or so foot pounds. According to my torque wrench, I have inch pounds. The lowest setting is 120, so that's 10 inch pounds. We have a threshold of 1.4 foot pounds plus or minus from 8.7 or something like that. So we can assume 9, 10, roughly, to get this guy put together. You can really just do it by hand, doesn't matter. But for the fact that we have a torque wrench, we're going to demonstrate it. We're going to want to go in some sort of a radial pattern once again. I like to start from the middle and work my way out. I like to give them a little bit of a snug as I go around. Make sure the thing is seated. As you torque one bolt down, the next ones are going to get looser as it squeezes together. So I'll start on the ends here. Wait for the click. Doing the sides, doing the bottom, then the top. All right, that there is our water pump. We need to put our new elbow hose on here. As you can see, the hose is a little bit longer. We're going to trim somewhere between a half inch to an inch off either end. And we're going to re-salvage our clamps from our old hose. Easiest way to do this is orient everything the way it came off. Here's our old hose where it fits. You can see that's the right orientation. What we want to do is make sure our new hose approximates that. One easy way to do it is to line them up together. 
that make a mark where they are. If you're not so sure where to cut it, uh, give it a little extra length, then you could always trim it back if you don't know where it wants to be. Let's make my mark there. Make my mark there, cut these real quick. All right, there's our new hose. Cut to approximately the same size and shape. Maybe we want to trim this guy a little bit. And slip that on. Make sure we got room around our clamp to get on there all the way. The other side on. If you have a hard time, sometimes a little bit of coolant, a little bit of spittle, a little bit of silicone spray. Either of those products will help you slide that hose on nice and easy. Even a little dish soap, perhaps. I'm going to get that clamp on there. In the uh, instance your factory clamp fails you, you could always go with the worm gear clamp. Which, uh, this one's not cooperating. We'll just leave it there. Now we're going to replace our thermostat. First we take the two 10 millimeter bolts out of the radiator nipple. Thermostat hangs out inside the water pump. She's a tight fit sometimes. Because it hurt to give her a little grab and pull. And there she is. This is what a proper Subaru thermostat should look like. It has this nice fat brass piece on here. We have a new one from Napa. Give or take your supplier. But you can see a difference here. Uh, we have a new thermostat. Usually you dictate that you put a new thermostat in. But from what we have, our original one is probably going to function a lot more efficiently than this one. Due to the larger um, thermocouple piece and due to the little jangly ball there that acts as a bleeder for the circulating system, which this thermostat does not have. So seeing that we have this, I'm going to tell this one to go back to the store and get some of the money back. I'm going to keep this one here, but while I have it apart, I'm going to put a new uh, new seal on it. It just peels off of there. And we're going to use the seal that came with our water pump. It's going to fit around the thermostat. You're not going to be able to install this thermostat without this rubber seal. Now when we install this, we want the nugget part up inside. And we want the jangly ball pointing towards the bypass hose. That thermostat with the shape of the gasket is going to just tuck right in there. The uh, radiator nipple on the bottom of this does not actually contact the water pump housing, but instead sandwiches the rubber gasket around the thermostat, which is what creates the seal. Do not ever assume anyone's hillbilly advice of removing the thermostat from an overheating Subaru, because that's not going to fix anything. When assembling this, make sure not to over tighten the bolts and snap them off or you're screwed. And you don't want to be screwed unless you like it. Just a little bit of hand torque. Snug and then an eighth of a turn with a quarter inch drive tool will do. Well, thanks, Holmes.